So welcome everyone to the launch of HCL uh, Connections version 7. I'm joined here with, uh, by Rene Schimmer today. Uh, for those of you that attended Wayne um, Kurtzman and Richard Jeff's session this morning, um, you know, this will be a fantastic dovetailing of the two topics together. Um, and if you didn't, please take the opportunity in the next couple of days or even next week to go back and take a look at it. Because um, this is a very exciting topic that we're going to get into. As always, if you have questions, please leave them in the chat, in the Q&A, um, or post them on Twitter uh, using the Digital Solutions handle and the hashtag Digital Week. And be assured that we will answer all of your questions. So next slide, please, uh, Rene. So, uh, what are we seeing today, right? Um, you know, Wayne and Richard were actually talking about it, but this is what I hear uh, consistently from Connections customer is, you know, we all expect a fundamental shift to hybrid forms of working after COVID, right? There's definitely a highlighted need to stay connected with each other in an open and transparent way. Given the fact that we're no longer in an office, Decisions, comments, uh, uh, discussions need to be more visible. Experts need to be more accessible and content needs to be more discoverable than ever before. So what do you do to actually get all of, you know, why do you need to get everyone all on the same page? And why do you even have communities? Well, you have them to communicate and maintain the company's vision and help to reinforce its culture, particularly in these times. It's also ensuring that there's a, an awareness of any shift in the business strategy of the organization, and, and also to keep a pulse on what's happening within the organization and making sure that all of your, the employee feedback is surfaced and addressed in a timely and responsible way. And, and the last thing on here, it's really helping to foster or promote that sense of community. You know, ensuring your employees continue to feel part of and connected to the teams and the communities they work with, even if their work locations have, have changed. Next slide, please, Renee. So we, we know you know, with the situation today is we can't afford to get this wrong, right? You know, community is even more crucial to your business outcomes than ever before. And we heard that from Wayne. So in lots of industry studies, actually before COVID, we know that a positive perception of work has proven business benefits. That's retention, that's higher productivity and fostering and retaining top talents. So now it's the time to go back to basics and think about these three things. Um, some or all of your workers will operate remotely and with no expectation that this may change for the foreseeable future. We need to make sure that everyone is on the same page and doesn't feel disconnected, whether it's from top-down communications or collecting two-way feedback and employee engagement across the whole entire organization is vital. Also, the last point here is, how do you maintain focus and how do you maintain productivity? Right now, customers aren't any less demanding. You know, competitors aren't slowing down either. Um, so you can't, so we can't and you can't afford to do that. So we know that staying in touch is vital a piece of that, even if you can't, can't sort of knock on the cube and have a conversation. And also we know, everyone knows that leveraging the experts in your network is often the informal and most effective way to resolve any roadblocks that you have quickly. But there are some barriers getting in the way of getting some of these basics in place. Next slide, Mr. Renick. So what is some of the things which are impacting employee productivity? Well, we know that there are dozens of overlapping and disparate applications. And if they're not integrated into your everyday flow of work, getting something done takes more time. We also know that the disconnect and dispersed content across your multiple silos makes finding uh, what's important nearly impossible. Put this all together and 
um, it really leads to an inability to turn tasks into successful outcomes and projects quickly and reliably. So what do we need? Fundamentally, we need a different approach. And guess what? Connections provides that structured approach that we need even more now than ever before, right? Using it as a hub for each of your working communities. You know, what is really exciting about this release, and I know Renny is going to show it to you, but in Connection 7, we have the ability to bring all of your employees and your communities together to solve, the, solve business problems, share expertise, and contribute to your company's culture faster than ever. In version 7, we make it easier in these, with these three key uh, areas of innovation. First, we can jumpstart your projects and make your prior project success repeatable. So you can quickly spin up a project using the new community wizard and best practice templates 80% faster. When you know that something works, Turn those best practices into a template that you can use throughout your organization. And in just a couple of clicks, you have a fully functioning, beautifully designed community set up, complete with content, structure, and everything you need to make your project a success. Second, we integrate the power of connections with Microsoft 365. We know many of our customers are running Microsoft 365. Our goal is to make them work together as seamlessly as possible in an environment so you can eliminate silos. Our approach, as you've often heard us talk about, is to integrate and to federate all of these third-party integrations and vendors such as Microsoft. So what does that mean if you do that? This means you save hours every week by eliminating the toggling between applications to find crucial information. You can click to start chats in Teams and easily share connections content in a team chat or a, team, or a channel tab. You can integrate SharePoint libraries with your connections communities and seamlessly shift content between Outlook client, any Outlook client, and connections. And thirdly, we can help to accelerate the deployment of these new capabilities for our existing Connections customers up to 90% faster. There's, and Renia will go into this in more detail, but there's new deployment scripts that mean getting your new version of Connections up and, up and running faster. There's also a cloud native version of the component pack, which now supports Amazon EKS and Red Hat OpenShift. And now you have the choice to deploy your upgrade and manage your Connections investment in the way that you want. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Rene to show you what I've just talked about. Rene? Thank you very much. All right. So now's the time where we actually do a live demo. Uh, yes, this is a live demo. So if something goes wrong, you'll have to bear with me. But uh, I'll walk you through the key features of Connection 7 based on an example that we created around Woodburn Financial. Woodburn Financial is a global credit card company that has offices throughout the world. And um, based on you know, the whole pandemic, of course, they had all their employees working from home for the past months and months and months like everybody. But with now that we learned uh, the vaccine is actually getting closer and eventually we're going to return to a new normal, Woodburn Financial is actually at the point where they can start bringing people back to their offices. So this is where we pick up with a guy called Felix. He works out of the Frankfurt, Germany office. And there were some other offices that came before him in the returning to office initiative. So for example, the Auckland office and the Sydney office have already started and brought back their people to the local offices. So now it's Felix's turn. And he's supposed to set up an environment where the local employees in Frankfurt can actually get information on how to return safely, what to expect, uh, how's the whole sanitation going, etc. So naturally, uh, he's a bit nervous, and it all starts out with um, a, a message that he receives in Teams from um, Woodburn Financial Global, the corporate organization. So let's start the demo. 
In the first step, like I said, he actually gets the message, said, Felix, you're the lucky one. You own the process of bringing your Frankfurt colleagues back to the office. So he looks at the Auckland community and then just goes right ahead to create a community. So let me get out of um, the presentation here, switch over to my browser, and we start out in Teams. So here we are where he get, gets the message from uh, Global, so that Rene guy there is one of the corporate guys, telling Felix that he is now in charge of bringing back the people to Frankfurt, and there is a link to the Auckland community. So this was the first one that actually went through the process. So they created a community, and here we are. So this is the Returning to Office Auckland community, RTO. I'll use that term a few times during the demo. And here you see, and Felix sees, a whole bunch of things that are listed. Um, so for example, there is a banner. There is a beautiful graphic of the Auckland skyline. There is a Q&A forum on the left there, right, where questions, questions have been answered, like, um, you know, do I need to wear a mask? And as you can see, you can click on it, and it shows the, the question and the answer right in context here of the community. So there's more. There is a list of local contacts for the Auckland office that the, um, the, the employees there can contact if they have questions. Um, there is a SharePoint library. Wow, they even integrated that into the community. So I just had to do one click to single sign on. There it is. So now we have a whole bunch of documents that um, the Auckland office decided to host in a SharePoint library, bringing it right here into the community. So there's a whole bunch more. There are wikis. Um, and what's this down there? Over on the right, there is a daily health check. We'll get back to that um, a little later. But that's an app that was built on Vault. Okay, so now that he's all seen that, he's getting a little nervous, right? There's a lot of information here. For example, here's a wiki on how to practice social distancing at work. He's already starting to think, how can I copy that and put it into my own community because he doesn't really want to um, recreate that himself. So what he's doing is he goes to the community catalog page and decides just to go right at it. So he clicks on create community, and here we have the new community creation wizard. So this is one of the brand new capabilities in Connection 7 that takes the user by the hand and walks them step by step through the process of creating a new community. So I'll create one following the uh, naming convention that we saw earlier, RTO Frankfurt. Felix decides to make that private for now. Um, because he wants to add content first um, and then make it public once everything's there. He's selecting an image to go with it. Click Next, and now there's a new screen. What's this? This is actually the ability to select the template, and Felix is happy to see that there's a returning to office template. So he assumes for now that at least he doesn't have to worry about the layout. So we'll go ahead and then um, he already talked to two of his colleagues, uh, Lucy Suarez, who's working with him, and Ben Parker. So he can add them to the community right away, and he can also make them owners. So they will help him in setting up the community and creating the local content. As I click Next, I can uh, add a tag to make it easier to find, so we'll just tag it RTO. And now we hit the Create button. While this is working in the background, let's just go back real quick to the presentation and see what's next. In the second phase of the project here, he actually, Felix created the community. And we assume for now that that was easy. We'll see that once we get back. And a lot is already there. So now he is going to start building out the Frankfurt community, put the local touch on it, and he will actually also share that community with the Frankfurt channel in Teams. And one step more, integrate the community into the Teams channel that was set up for the RTO Frankfurt initiative. So let's see how that works. 
So we're still creating in the background here. It's still spinning, but that should be done any moment now. There we are. Community created successfully. It is loading the RTO Frankfurt community. And look at that. Holy moly. There's actually a whole bunch of stuff here already. And one of the things that were really making Felix nervous was the daily health check app. So that's already here. Wow. Um, we have the local team. Of course, Heidi is corporate, so we need to replace her. But all the wikis are there. The Q&A forum is even there. And the links. So all of this was already pushed into the community based on the template. So he really doesn't have much left to do. But the little thing that he needs to do, let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the local response team here. As you can see, uh, as he is the owner, he can click on the edit button and he can now change what that wiki is, uh, that widget is displaying. So here we have the preview on the right and on the left we configure what this people selector um, widget is doing. First of all, I want to take out the message from corporate here to replace the contacts. I want to remove Heidi because she's not working out of Frankfurt. And now we will select, first of all, um, we have Felix Adams, there he is. And then we also add Lucy Suarez, there she is. And then we have Ben Parker. Excuse me for not uh, having real German sounding names, but <laughs> it's a demo environment. So there we are, there's the preview. We'll click save. And now you see that we have the local team actually representing here. So now for the obvious one, this is not Frankfurt, right? That's Sydney right there. So this was one of the images that was uh, copied over through the template. And the next step is for Felix to actually change that. Now I have to explain something. This is not just a simple image, right? You see there's an overlay of text, text and the tags there. So there's a bit more going on than just putting an image there. Uh, this is actually a JavaScript uh, that I'll have to go into to um, replace the image and change the text. So we can do that right here. So you'll see a little bit of code, but don't worry, nothing scary is happening here. Um, this is the URL to the Sydney image. I have copied a Frankfurt, not yet. Okay, let's try this again. Now it should have copied it. Wow, this is a live demo, so the paste just didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go. So now we have the Frankfurt image in there. And then I want to change one more thing. I don't want to just say your local office. I want to say to the Frankfurt office. And as you can see, the script updates the overlay on the image. And there we have the beautiful old skyline of Frankfurt. And now we have a very localized image here in the community. Okay, one more thing. So Felix, as the owner, also sees a customized button here. Uh, so now he actually has access to a new panel. This is also something that we introduced with Connection 7 based on the highlights page that we introduced earlier. We are continuing to enhance this capability. And as you can see, we can add the uh, traditional connections apps like blog, wiki, forum, all the ones you, you know, and then a whole list of widgets where you can just present all this content in different ways, where you can have that people selector that we see on the right there and a whole bunch of other things. And for example, also that SharePoint library that he saw in the Auckland community, that's how you would add it. You just click it here and add the SharePoint widget to the page, you connect it to the SharePoint library, and you're done, super easy. Uh, we're gonna skip adding um, an application. Um, I wanna be mindful of the time, but what I want to do is move this widget here with the four main things that people need to think about when going to the office to the top of the page. It's as simple as grabbing it and dragging it up. There we go. So now with drag and drop, I can move each widget around on the page, reposition it, and the same thing would happen if I add a new uh, app or widget to the page, I can move it around, configure it like we saw with the people selector and be done with it, super easy. So let's close this. 
and we are now done with customizing the local community. Of course, in real life, he would do a whole bunch more, but for the sake of time, let's say that's it. Now he wants to bring in Lucy and Ben, his partners in crime, to actually add more local flavor to the community. So what would be a good way to do it? Uh, Woodburn Financial uses um, teams to do the, the communication. So what we can do here is in the upper right-hand corner, you see that there is a button. It's called Share to Microsoft Teams. I can click this, and what will happen is that it will take the page that I'm currently looking at. This could be this highlights page, but it could also be a forum, a wiki, a file any page in connections, you can easily take and share with a Teams channel. So here I already created one earlier for the Frankfurt office. So I can select that here. And I'll paste in some text that I'm going to copy from this machine here. That's why I'm staring over to the left. There's another computer where I can do the copy and then paste it here. There we go. And now share it to that channel that the Frankfurt team, in this case, Lucy and Ben, are already in. Okay, so let's switch back to Teams and see where we're at. So I'll switch from chat to Teams. There's the Frankfurt channel, and there you go. There is the message I just pasted in uh, to get Lucy and Ben involved. All right, one more thing that I'm going to do is I want to make it easy for Lucy and Ben um, to actually work on the local content within that community. So what I decide to do is to add connections to this channel. So I click the plus sign, add a tab, I select connections, and now, of course, I have to go to my community that I just created, so it's going to look for RTO, there's Frankfurt. You see all the other cities that also have channels. And now I'm connected to the Frankfurt community. Um, I can pick different apps. Um, for example, let's start with Forum. I want to add the, the Forum app to this channel. And here, if I leave this checked, uh, there will be a message in this channel letting Lucy and Ben know that I just added this. So now it's refreshing, and lo and behold, there is the forum that is in the Frankfurt community. So this should look familiar. We looked a little bit at this in the highlights page, clicked on the first entry and saw the answer. But let's do one more. Let's also add a wiki. So we do the same thing, put in the name of the community, there it is, Frankfurt, and now I select the wiki and shorten the name a little bit here. Same thing, save, and now it will load that wiki in Teams, and there you go. There is your full connections wiki inside this channel. Okay. Now let's shift gears. We're going to go back and look at the slide for just a second. So he has now brought in the team, started with creating the actual local content, and we will now switch over to Lucy. Lucy is on her iPad, and she sees those notifications and decides to actually create some of the local content and update some of the things that are there. I am going to use um, QuickTime here and connect to my iPad. There it is. And as you can see over here on my iPad, I have Teams open or available as well. There it is. So now we are in Teams on my iPad. Let's hide the other windows here. And there's the Frankfurt channel. So there's something new in there. It's bold. And here we see what we've just done just before um, as Felix adding the forum and the wiki. So now Lucy can go ahead and say, you know what, let me take a look at this. Let's go into the forum, for example. So again, in Teams, connecting live, 
to the Connections Forum, and there it is. And we see most of them are already answered. That all came in from the corporate template, but there's one that wasn't answered, the cafeteria question, because every office will, of course, have um, a different schedule for reopening up their, their cafeteria, right? So what Lucy decides is she wants to answer this question, so she hits reply, and I just copied some text from my other machine over there on the left, and she has a text here that says, well, Friday is food truck day, right? But yes, oh, it's actually the wrong text. <laughs> Let's try that again with the right text. There we go. And now paste this one in. So yes, the cafeteria will be open. And she can now save this. And now we have this question uh, in the forum done. Okay, so now let's do one more thing. Uh, as, as one example that we want to do here, she wants to actually also update the menu. Um, and this is where actually the food truck day will come in. So the menu is in a wiki. It's right there, cafeteria, menus, and practices. There it is, and you see there's the menu. Um, she decides that after working with some local food truck companies, or vendors that Fridays will be food truck day. So, oops. So let's delete the text that's here and paste in the new text that I hopefully still have in my clipboard. There it is. And now I can save and close this and I have an updated menu. All of this happening in Teams, right? Super easy. There is no switching back and forth. There is not, you know, guessing where is the stuff that I need to do. It's all here, and she can now go back to um, Felix and say, job done. Beautiful. Okay. So that was the part where we added the local content to the community. Now let's um, do the last part of the demo where we actually look at what happens on Monday morning, the first day that we open the office. We'll stay with Lucy, but this time I'm gonna grab my phone here and she will actually, um, on her way to the office, do two things. First, she's sitting in the bus driving to the office and she thought, you know what, I saw this wiki that talked about the social distancing practices. It's great to have it in the community. It's great to have it available for people to see uh, um, on their phone and tablet and whatnot, but that would be a good one to print out and hang up in the hallway because then it's right there as people walk in. Second, everybody has to do the health check um, when they go to the office every day. So that's the second part that you will do. So now let's go back here and switch to my phone. So there's my iPhone, and that should be coming up. Let's hide all the other stuff, move it in the middle. So there's my phone. Okay. So Lucy decides to go to connections. There we go. Now the bar is gone. Okay, as we're logging in, so now we see there is, let's just refresh this real quick. The updates come in. And there, 13 minutes ago, you see that Felix added Lucy to the RTO Frankfurt community. So let's go there. There it is. And there is the community as we created. Remember, we moved this set of images up, so now it is displayed on top here. But notice, of course, all of this here is now responsive, right? On the mobile app, this, of course, looks different because we have less uh, real estate. So Highlights is smart enough to adjust it uh, so the community actually looks like um, it looks readable on the phone. So what we wanted to do first is grab one of the wikis and print it. So there is the one here, how to practice social distancing at work. So this is the wiki that I showed you real quick earlier as uh, when we were still Felix. Now, one of the new capabilities that we have in Connections now is called Export to PDF. Export to PDF is a great tool to take a one-page wiki or a hundred-page wiki and export it to a PDF for either the purpose of just 
archiving, sharing, or in this case here, printing without all the navigation header and footer coming from the page um, out to the printer. So she sees this wiki here, decides to um, export that as a PDF, and you'll see that we can't just send it to the printer just like that. There's a lot more we can do. We can actually select a template. I have one here called HCL Preview, and she doesn't want to print all five pages. She just wants the um, this one here, how to practice social distancing. And since this is not a fax, we don't need the title page and the table of contents, in case you remember what a fax is. And then I can click on Generate PDF. There we go. And then here we are. There's the PDF. Look at that. Beautiful. So now it's a clean cut page with a header and a footer. I can send this, or Lucy can send this off to the printer, which is the printer in her office. Off we go. Fantastic. So job done. Now one more thing she wanted to do, or actually she has to do, is on the way to the office, she has to do the daily health check. I did mention earlier that this is a Volt app. So this is the example of how you can bring low-code apps into your community, right? This is a simple example. It could be something completely different. It could be um, an approval process or if you want to order something. Uh, in this scenario here, we have a daily health check that everybody needs to do who comes to an office. Uh, if you answer all questions with no, you'll see a green button that tells you you are okay to enter the office building, and there you go. You can now walk in and go about your day in the office. Wonderful. So that was the demo. Quick tour on some of the C7 highlights. Um, we'll just go back to the slides for a bit more and summarize what we've just seen. So first of all, back to Woodburn Financial. Right? I mentioned that this is a global organization with many, many, many offices around the world. And just think of the scale of time savings that I just demonstrated to you. With this template that copies not only the layout, but all of the relevant content that previous offices have learned, the best practices, can all be put into the template. The template can evolve and more and more comes in. So the more we repeat this initiative of bringing people back to the office, um, the more time we save, right? So Andrew mentioned something about saving 80% in, in creating a community. Yeah, that's about it, right? Because Felix didn't have to worry about any of it, really. It was all there, including an app, including uh, the, the content, including the beautiful images. The hard part was taken care for him. Okay, so what made this work? Um, this works because bringing together the wizard that makes it very easy to create a community, it focuses you on the, on the few essential steps. There aren't many, but you have to walk through them. The wizard does exactly that. The second is selecting a template and putting in what was learned in earlier best practices. Really easy, and that is the huge time saver, right? And then thirdly, um, if an organization is using tools like Teams um, or, or other persistent chat tools, the integration here allows you to remove the barrier of jumping between apps. Again, a huge time saver and helping you to stay focused because you just saw Lucy creating content in a wiki, in a forum, within her Teams channel, where she just happened to be on her iPad, right? Very, very easy to do. Okay, so let's summarize on what Connection 7 brings you. One of the three main focus areas of Connection 7 was the ability to create tailored experiences around your community. Right, the community and building engaging communities is one of the, of the cornerstones of what Connections does. And we make success repeatable. We'll help you jumpstart your initiatives, your projects, and it really helps to get your employees engaged because now with you know, continued work on the highlights page, we make it so much more engaging and relevant to what people need in the moment. Secondly, the integration with Microsoft 365 um, 
kind of removes that barrier where you see people, you know, just posting something in Teams as, as a chat, but then three weeks later you can't find it anymore. Since we bring the best of both worlds together, you now have an easy way to get to everything when you need it. Uh, I showed you the Teams integration in detail. You saw a short snippet about SharePoint libraries being in a community, but we also have a brand new integration into Outlook that I didn't demo here, but it's a completely from the ground up new integration into Outlook to uh, save emails and attachments into connections as a task in an activity, as a file in, 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 in a community file, etc. Right? There is a lot going on there as well. And then, of course, we have round trip editing with Office, um, which we, we refreshed a little bit as well. The third area that I quickly want to mention is the time it takes to install connections and the massive improvements we've done on that front. We have, uh, first of all, for the component pack, added support for EKS and OpenShift, as Andrew mentioned earlier. So this will make it much easier for you to deploy the component pack, which is a, a large set of capabilities based on uh, um, Docker containers to those cloud services. But another really significant step is something that we did in the third bullet, uh, second bullet point there with the automated scripts. We actually developed a whole host of scripts that literally take the time to install connections from however long it took before down to something like two and a half hours, right? So you can basically start the script and it will lay down everything from the operating system to your WAS to your database. Um, the containers, et cetera, and you have a fully running operational system with all the components from docs to orient me and whatnot in literally two and a half hours. So that is amazing. If you want to know how that works, you know, reach out, we'll help you. Uh, this will be a big, big time saver for you. Okay. With this, I'll hand it back to Andrew for uh, closing comments. Thanks, Renee, and wow, <laughs> I'm, I'm so impressed by the uh, the amount of capabilities and value that we can bring in version seven here. <clears throat> and thanks for stepping us through so clearly and concisely there, Renee, great job. So, you know, when I think about connections, it really powers your, uh, people power your business, the connections powers your people. You know, um, thinking back to, you know, um, you know, what's in front of us today, you know, the idea of communities is certainly in in a mode of renaissance here. And I believe with Connections version 7, it is your digital workplace that will bring your employees and your communities together, particularly in this time of COVID, and however these hybrid modes of uh, working is going to be, to make it easier for you to continue that level of productivity, connectedness across the organization, uh, solve the business problems and challenges that you have in front of us, share the expertise, get to those experts that can help you remove the road, roadblocks and ultimately continue to build and reaffirm your corporation's culture associated with that. Now, the, I have one final slide uh, to share with you is, Renny, can we move forward? Perfect. Um, you're going to be able to dive more deeply into this. I was looking at the questions. There's lots of great questions. We will be uh, returning to those questions and answering all of those in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but thank you for all the questions. Lots of excitement in the chat there. Um, we have a couple of uh, opportunities here for you to learn more. Firstly, attend the session where we will actually show you the code. So Rene and Andre Hagemeyer will be taking you through showing you the code uh, later this week. Um, also, tomorrow you will have an opportunity to hear from Rene about the vision that we have for the enterprise community platform and connections over the next uh, year or two. So you, that's a session you're not going to uh, want to miss there. And if you are uh, You've just heard the news about Connections version 7, and you may have not heard about the preview. Um, you have an opportunity to go out and try it. The preview of Connections 7 is still up and running. Um, the link and the presentations will be provided so you can take a look at it. 
Um, we're still open for feedback there. And as we've said in many forums before, we want you to try any of our offerings before they go to EGA to get your feedback. And once they're actually available, is for you to easily trial them as well. So, so thanks for all your feedback. You know, we will be answering the questions as I, as I mentioned. Uh, I know Rene and I are going to be back in uh, 20 minutes or so for Project Yuzu. That's a session you're going to want to uh, listen to. I think it dovetails with some of the questions. So thank you for attending this session. Uh, thank you, Rene. Be well and enjoy the rest of the conference.